So Chuck never actually supplied us with a broadcast band coil formula for his high performance receiver. But I really think that uh, building a broadcast coil is your first step with this receiver. You really need to have a broadcast coil so that you can figure out what's going on with the receiver. So I suggest this is the first coil you wind. And it's pretty simple. It has 15 turns on top, that's the primary. That's the input coming in from the preamplifier. Then it's got around 100 turns of either another number 28 or number 30 wire. It looks like I have number 30 in there. And then down below we have the tickler coil, which is 10 turns of number 28 or number 30. Okay, so this is the broadcast band coil. So you're trying to balance the tickler coil against your throttle capacitor. I had a throttle capacitor in there of around 150 picofarads, which is okay for maybe shortwave bands, but for the broadcast band, if you want to cover the entire band, you really need more than that. So I just went ahead and put a ordinary 365 picofarad capacitor in the throttle position. Okay. Now it's a backwards capacitor, so up is down, down is up, but Regardless of that, it's 365 or better picofarads of throttle capacitor. This is the main tuning capacitor, another 365 picofarad capacitor. The 1N4001 diode is acting as the varactor for fine tuning. It has some effect on the broadcast band, but it's really made for shortwave. Here's the RF gain control down here. Uh, this is the throttle control if you're using the onboard capacitor with this potentiometer. It's not connected. The capacitor is not hooked up, so this doesn't do anything right now. We're using the main uh, variable here for the throttle. And then, of course, we have the on volume. So what you're going for with any broadcast regen is you would like to be able to get into regeneration from the bottom of the band, and that's over here again, this capacitor is backwards too, to the top of the band. I should switch places on these. This would work good for the throttle cap, this would work good for the tuning cap. Gee, wouldn't that be nice if I just flipped these? <laughs> so we're down here. This is the hardest place at the lowest frequency or the biggest mesh on the capacitor to get regeneration because your mutual coupling in the coil is the least at the lowest frequency. So down here, I'm not hearing anything. So we have to put more throttle in. Can you see? We've actually had to use most of the capacitor. I would say it's around 300 picofarads to get into regeneration. Again, Fox Okay, so now let's go up towards the top of the band. As you can see, we're well into regeneration. Let's back off. Okay. Okay, so we're towards the top of the band, probably around 1200 kilohertz, and we're using. Oh, I would estimate about 100 picofarads for that to work. Let's go higher in frequency. Two. When you dial. Okay, we're up at the top of the band. That's probably right at the top of the AM band. And there I am. I just, just had to move it a little bit. So we're not using that much of the capacitor at this point to get into regeneration. So there you go. That's a well-balanced coil. It's allowing the throttle capacitor to work across the entire band to get you into regeneration from 550 kilohertz all the way up to probably 1700 kilohertz. So this is a well-balanced AM regenerative setup right now. But it meant that I had to have a throttle capacitor that was a high enough value to cover the whole band. I had to be 
almost at uh, you know 70 to 100 picofarads up at the top of the band and I needed to be about probably 270 picofarads to go into oscillation at the bottom of the band. So that's why that 365 made so much sense as a throttle capacitor. Now let's disconnect this throttle capacitor and hook up the potentiometer, which is connected to the 470 picofarad, and we'll see if the potentiometer can do the same thing. I have disconnected the throttle capacitor and I've connected the resistive throttle that uses the fixed 470 picofarad capacitor. Uh, once again, we're talking David Lightner, we're talking about Harbor Care and, and ways that they provide services. We have posted some so, first thing you notice right off the bat, especially when we look at uh, helping those. The resistive control is not as pleasing as a real throttle control. Like the, the brackets of, you know, the level of service. Um, but you're dealing with veterans. Does it work? From, yes. Uh, the different conflicts. I mean, we still, you know, we're still. It does work. Okay, but it's just not as nice as a real physical variable capacitor throttle control. Let's check the bottom of the band. Ooh. Because it was all on theoretical chalkboard. But to be here now after you and I have been through this for us. <laughs> Looks like we can't come out of regeneration down here. So the throttle control is having trouble down at the bottom of the band. Now, this is counterintuitive because usually you'd need more throttle at the lower frequencies. So it's, uh, it's acting the opposite. Down at these lower frequencies, I can't get out of oscillation. So this is where you're starting to scratch your head and say, well, why is that working fine with the throttle control, the physical one? So it's a complex impedance that we're presenting rather than a nice capacitor to ground. So that sets up other issues. Perhaps the choke is not as effective at the lower frequency. Remember, we're using a very low cost choke. We're using this 50 cent choke here for L1 and that's working fine at the shortwave frequencies but maybe at the broadcast band it has some kind of resonance that works with the resistance resistance in the potentiometer we're not getting good throttle this is where you start to scratch your head and say maybe I need to wind a better choke maybe on a type 77 or 43 toroid maybe even resort to a real choke god forbid Perhaps there's something going on with, you know, bypassing or some other problem associated with the board. But in any case, the resistive throttle is not working on this particular board with that particular choke and that particular potentiometer. A different potentiometer, maybe one that's designed differently, a higher quality potentiometer might work just fine. I'm glad we saw this kind of a problem because these are the kinds of things you might run into when you're using less than perfect parts. Everybody would like to use all potentiometers and not have to pay for these expensive variable capacitors. Some of these costing $20 or $30 each, I'd rather spend $5 on a Varactor tuning diode or a $2 potentiometer than I would buying these expensive parts. But there's always a price to pay for making those compromises with a regen. The better the quality of the parts, the easier the regen is to get under control. So this is shortwave 2 coil, and it covers approximately, oh, maybe 2.5 to a little over 40 meters, around 8 megahertz. So up here at the top, it's not very stable. But when you go down to 80 meters, it, it's a lot better because you have more of the coil. Uh, Cubby, please. Hold it. You can't, you can't adjust the shortwave. Hold on here. We gotta, we gotta take care of this cat. Here we are at 80 meters. 
Now this is 80 meters and we're using about half of the variable capacitor. A lot more stable, a lot more capacitance and gauge. Remember, this thing's a lot like a VFO. You want to build it like a VFO. So if we were targeting 40 meters, this would not be the coil that we'd use. Probably you'd want a coil that has fewer turns in the secondary, and that would engage more of the capacitor and get you more stability up on 40. All regens are like this. You want to use as much capacitance as possible for the band that you're interested in and then do your fine-tuning you know, with the fine-tuning control or your trimmer capacitor. The other thing we notice is uh, we're not using very much of the throttle. So you could probably get away with, on these hand bands, a smaller throttle capacitor like this 150. But if you want to do the AM band and you want to do wide swaths of shortwave bands, I suggest that you do use a 365 picofarad throttle capacitor. So this is a typical shortwave 2 wind. It's probably got between 15 and 18 turns on the secondary to give you the band you want, you know, between 2.5 and, and 8 megahertz. And uh, as you can see on top, it looks like 5 and 5 for the uh, primary coil and the tickler coil. I would say I would take one turn off the tickler. This thing seems very hot on this board. And you'll be doing that. You'll be optimizing your throttle according to the number of tickler turns. It really is all about the coil construction. Winding plug-in coils is what it's all about with these regens. doesn't matter what kind you're talking about. This is CHU on 3.33. Same coil. So all of this down here is wasted. It's in the 2 megahertz band. So again, I would take some turns off this coil if you want to have a little more balanced 80 to 40 meter kind of coil. Okay, must be contest weekend, on CW at least. Now, I've disconnected the throttle control on top, and we're under potentiometer and fixed capacitor throttle. Let's see how effective that is compared to the, uh, the regular variable capacitor. I actually think it works a little better up here than it did on the broadcast band. It is a compromise. Nothing will beat a physical throttle capacitor, but the potentiometer with the fixed capacitor is a good compromise. Of course, it's much lower cost. You're talking about a $2 potentiometer uh, working with a, a 10 cent capacitor as opposed to a $38 variable capacitor. Okay, big difference there. So that might be worth it to some people. The main tuning can also be turned into a varactor tuning by sacrificing the fine tuning control and bringing a good quality potentiometer, maybe even a 10 turn potentiometer out, replacing the one in 4001 diode that we're using as a tuning diode with a proper hyper abrupt uh, varactor diode, you will be able to tune just like you have a physical capacitor. Now, those diodes cost about five or six dollars each, but again, five or six dollars each, even if you bought two of them to do a back-to-back -back diode tuning, it still turns out to be cheaper than buying the, the $35 or whatever tuning capacitor. So you could do an all potentiometer type receiver with this board. There's some compromises, of course, compared to using the physical variables.